There are few animals more iconic of Scotland, and Celtic culture in general, than the Highland stag the red deer. The European red deer may be found across the continent, and even as far away as southwestern Asia, Asia Minor and the Caucasus, and North Africa. Both Ireland and Scotland have their own subspecies Scotland Cervus elephus scoticus. The animal was introduced to the British Isles sometime in the Stone Age. It was known to continental tribes well before then and revered as a spiritual animal as well as a source of food, clothing and tool-making materials. Cave paintings showing the deer date from as early as 40,000 years ago. This noble beast has been inspiring Celtic thought for thousands of years. In Celtic myth and religion, the stag personifies the power of the other world realm of the dead and the gods, the forest and untamed nature generally. The animal is powerful, agile and sexually vigorous. Its antlers, which resemble the branches of a tree, are an emblem of the regenerative and cyclical pattern of nature they grow throughout the summer, are used in the rutting duels, and drop off in the winter only to grow again next spring. The antlers also remind us that nature can be dangerous and violent, or benign. Celtic spirits often take deer form. The goddess Flydies is one. Another is the Kalich Bera the Old Woman of Beer, who lives on an island off the coast of County Cork the Beer Peninsula is associated with the islands in the western sea that are the land of the dead. She takes the form of a deer to avoid capture and herds her own deer by the shore. Other mythic figures such as Oisin and Sab also have connections to deer. A new deity to gain major status in the Neo-Hittite era was Karhuhaz or Karunta, the stag god. He was probably a fertility or protector god of nature. His identification with the stag is significant. The stag was not a particularly important animal to very many deities and religions in the other historic i.e. pantheons. Bears, boars, raven, and many other animals are well represented as the totemic animals of gods and goddesses across the spectrum. However, in classical times the stag was of paramount importance to the Scythians and other peoples across the Eurasian steppes. The subject of the most striking Scythian gold jewelry, the stag has even been found as tattoos on the so-called Ice Princess in the Altai Mountains. Here at the eastern extremity of the IE steppe culture zone, her frozen body was recovered with Scythian-style stags still plainly visible on her skin. We can only guess how ubiquitous this iconography was expressed in the patterns on clothes and other perishable material or for how long it lasted. The stag was one of the favorite motifs of the so-called Kurgan peoples in previous millennia, and so its pedigree as an object of veneration amongst the Ireland ethnic peoples is very ancient. As a wild and majestic animal, we should not doubt that the genesis of this deity's veneration began before the Neolithic period. It is thought that the stag god originated in the steppes. He was brought to Anatolia by the early Indo-Iranian peoples who left their Kurgan burials at Trialeti and elsewhere in the region and mixed with the Hurrian and other peoples as far as northern Anatolia. The symbol of the cosmos and the mother of the sun was symbolized as a large horned female doe. The great horned doe often was shown carrying the sun in her horns, in some cases the sun itself was symbolized as a stag the son of the doe of the legend. The Hungarian Regos bards tell a story that illustrates the stag as the carrier of the sun the hind represents not the sun, but its mother, the heavenly firmament, the cosmos, which carries the stars, the sun and the moon in its horns. For these reasons the Scythian stags often represented the horns of the stag-like flames. In northern Siberia, the heavenly reindeer, symbolized by the Big Dipper, steals the sun, and that is why there is no sun for half a year in the Arctic. When the mythical hunter, who is often symbolized by a bear, kills the female reindeer, it starts the new days. This is an important key to the stories, for the chase after the stag is a hunt for the return of the sun, which during winter is taken away by the stag. The hunters are searching for its light and heat. The recapturing of stag then brings back summer. The girls of the legend are the Does, the daughters of Light Leucipius in Greek, who return the light and fertility of the sun. For that reason they have names which indicate light, white, burning Dula or Eula Sar means gold, light stag. Bülür or Bugur is stag in Turkic. 
The ancient Norse mythology tells how four stags browsed the foliage of the world tree Yggdrasil, in this manner eating away the bud's hours, blossoms days and branches seasons, there is an eagle that sits in the branches of the ash, and it has knowledge of many things, and between its eyes sits a hawk called Vertfolner. A squirrel called Ratatosk runs up and down through the ash and carries malicious messages between the eagle and Nidhogg the dragon or snake that eats the roots. For stags run in the branches of the ash and feed on the foliage. Their names are, Dane, Dvalin, Dunir, Durathur. These four stags have been thought to represent the four winds. As it says here, Yggdrasil suffers hardships more than people realize. Stag bites above, and at the sides it rots, Nidhogg eats away at it below. The horned one, Cernunnos is depicted with ram horns or antlers. His most famous depiction is on the Gundestrap cauldron, where he is the main figure and has exaggerated antlers that recall the Scythian stag art. As a god of fertility in wild animals, his nature and name suggest a link to the Hittite Karhuhas. The development of Cernunnos in Celtic religion may have been early or he may have been adopted after the 8th century BCE when Scytho-Sumerian elements invaded Central Europe. Cernunnos seems to have been the origin for the later Celtic underworld god who, with his hellhounds, periodically rode through the night skies on his wild hunt. While steppe culture influenced Celtic art at this time, the Horned One may be at least one legacy of steppe religion in Celtic history. There also appears to be links with this Celtic god and the ancient green man symbolism. There is also a link through Neolithic cave art where there is the depiction of people, either for hunting or for shamanistic practice, dressing in deer hide and wearing antlers. In Greek myth, meanwhile, this animal is most prominently found as the Chaeronean stag, a fantastic beast with golden horns and brass hooves. It was sacred to the huntress goddess Artemis. Another Greek myth tells of how Actaeon, a great hunter, followed a stag during the hunt and came upon a valley where the goddess Artemis happened to be bathing. Artemis was furious when she discovered the mortal Actaeon watching her naked and turned him into a stag. Then, she set his own hounds upon him and they tore him apart. Another tale recounts how Artemis killed two giants who had tried to violate her. She turned herself into a white hind and walked between the giants, when they tried to strike her with their javelins, they killed each other instead. The symbol and reverence of the stag amongst the Anglo-Saxons is a tradition that is very likely to be rooted in the most ancient of Germanic culture and religion. In England we know such reverence of stags was already a strong custom even in the days of St. Augustine, for he is quoted as condemning the filthy practice of dressing up like a horse or stag, a tradition that seems to resemble closely the English custom of Udeni. Like so many of the other animal symbols connected to the Anglo-Saxons, we only have to look at the Sutton who ship burial for evidence. Within the burial was found a spectacular scepter that was topped off with a beautiful stag figure. The scepter to the king who carried it symbolized his power and high status. And it could be that amongst the heathens the stag was regarded as the most noble and proud of animals and would therefore be a most appropriate symbol of a king and his leadership. Extremely strong evidence pointing to the use of stag images, but not only their images, but the worship of stags too, is found in a quote from St. Aldhelm who wrote to a friend the following. Where once the crude pillars Ermula of the same foul snake and the stag were worshipped with coarse stupidity in profane shrines. A later in medieval, English addition to the stag legend is that of Hearn the Hunter. The name Hearn may be a linguistic cognate with the Celtic Cernanos. In modern times his shamanic style appearance in the TV series Robin Hood has increased his popularity. Many Native Americans believe deer and other animals with forked horns and antlers represented forked or double nature. The white-tailed deer was thought to be an animal helper, but the dark-tailed deer meant danger. The Hopi deer dance was to bring the rain, the California Yurok white deer dance was for a bountiful wild crop and the Zuni deer dance was to bring a cure for illness. When the Cherokee traveled during harsh winter weather, they rubbed their feet in warm ashes and sang a song to acquire powers for the four animals whose feet never were frost-bitten opossum, wolf, fox, and deer. To the Pawnee, the deer is a guide to the light of the sun. 
The Panch Indians of Colombia believe that human souls pass into the bodies of deer after death and therefore eating the flesh of deer is forbidden to them. In ancient Mexico, deer were sometimes depicted carrying the sun, which is curiously similar to the ancient steppe myth.